Hey y'all, Attorney Tom here. By request, I'm acting, reacting to a video called The Law You Won't Be Told by C.G.P. Gray. It has almost 12 million views. Let's jump right into it. On a jury, you know your options, guilty or not. But there's another choice that neither the judge nor the lawyers will tell you, often because they're not allowed to. This is about jury nullification. And also because it might be better if you don't know. This video will tell you that third choice, but be warned, simply watching may prevent you from ever serving on a jury. So this is your last chance to hit the pause button before you learn about jury nullification, when the defendant is 100% beyond a reasonable doubt guilty, but the jurors also think he shouldn't be punished. The jury can... Okay, so not only is this applicable in criminal law, but it can also be applicable in civil law as well. Essentially, what jury know if it... He's probably going to explain it. I have some stories to tell, though. And nullify the law and let him go free. But before you're on your next jury and yell null booyah at the judge, you should know that just talking about jury nullification in the wrong circumstances can get you arrested. Though a video such as this one simply acknowledging the existence of jury nullification and in no way advocating it is totally okay. And Okay, so what I think he's talking about to even talking about jury nullification and getting arrested is perjury. So in that case, it would be an instance where somebody lies, affirmatively lies to get onto a jury and then uses jury nullification to void the verdict or what should have been the verdict. And also, real quick, I take a total issue of what he said. Just because you know about jury nullification doesn't mean that you are barred from serving on a jury. I've seen firsthand some smart asses just come out and say out of the woodworks that towards the end of war die like, hey, I... If I will nullify this jury, some total BS excuse because they want to get out of jury duty. That is a huge pet peeve of mine. Y'all, jury duty is so important. You know why it's important? Because Karen is going to show up to jury duty. So just think if you were the defendant in a criminal case, do you want 12 Karens on your jury? No, I know jury duty sucks. I know it takes a long time. I know you don't get paid enough to be there or pay, get paid at all. And you're missing work, all that kind of stuff. But it is so important. A jury of 12 people is literally the strongest, most complete form of government. They have total power over somebody's life, over people's lives. Go to jury duty because Karen will. To Paul, we're at it. CGP Gray is not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. This is meant for entertainment purposes only. Seriously, guy, don't do anything in a court of law based on what an internet video told you. No joke. So why can't I should you steal do this? that? It's That's a great disclaimer. It's because in the law, but exists as a logical consequence of two other laws. First, the juries can't be punished for a wrong decision, no matter what the witnesses, DNA evidence, or video proof show. That's the point of a jury, to be the final decider. And second, when a defendant is found not guilty, that defendant can't be tried again for the same crime. So there are only two stated options, guilty or not. It's just that jury nullification is when the words of the jurors don't match their thoughts, for which they can't be punished, and be their flipped. not guilty decision can't be changed. The other way as well. These laws are necessary for juries to exist within a fair system, but the logical consequence is contention. Lawyers and judges argue about jury nullification like physicists argue about quantum mechanics. Both are difficult to observe, and the interpretation of both has a huge philosophical ramification for the subject as a whole. Is jury nullification the righteous will of the people, or an anarchy of 12, or just how citizens judge their laws? The go-to example in favor of nullification is the fugitive slave law, when northern juries refuse to convict escaped slaves and set them free. Can't argue with that. But the anarchy side is southern juries refusing to convict lynch mobs, not humanity at its best, but both of these are juries nullifying the law. And also, juries have two options for where their thoughts may differ from their words. Jury nullification usually refers to the non-guilty version, but juries can convict without evidence just as easily as they can acquit. In and also, real quick, this video is failing to address civil juries as well, which are very, very important. I myself am a civil trial lawyer, primarily in catastrophic personal injury. However, Jury nullification can take place off of two main priorities. One is the law, two is the people or organization. Let me give you a great example of both. First, let's start with jury nullification based off of a person or an organization. I had just become a lawyer. 
one of the very first cases I ever got to be involved in. I did not try the case. I was not picking a jury on the case. I was simply I asked to be included in this trial by some seasoned lawyers because I wanted to learn. I wanted to observe. I wanted to be in the background watching. I didn't sit at counsel's table. I was just there for preparations at night, discussing strategy, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, the case was against a church. We represented a lady who was suing a church because the church broke a contract. This was a business dispute against a church. And in this particular case, we were worried that members of the jury wouldn't find for us because the other side was a church. Despite having all the facts point to the church acting in bad faith, which is ironic, and breaking the contract, some people just wouldn't be able to find or hold a church liable for the business damage that they caused. So that is an example of jury nullification as it pertains to a person or an entity. Now let's talk about jury nullification as it pertains to a law. In the criminal world, let's use something like the death penalty, okay? Let's say the prosecution is seeking the death penalty and there's somebody on the potential panel of jurors who just does not believe in the death penalty. So even though the prosecution could prove its case beyond a reasonable doubt, this particular case objectively is proved where the death sentence is warranted as supported by the law. Well, that juror could never find for the death penalty because it's against their morals. On the flip side, on the civil side, and this is something I have to deal with all the time, when I'm seeking a catastrophic personal injury verdict, I am sometimes asking for millions, if not tens of millions of dollars. And we can get in debates about this all day, but there are just some people who cannot fathom that amount of money for pain and suffering. Even though personally, I have been lucky enough to give clients lots and lots of money. I've never met a single client who'd rather have the money than their health back and in the world I choose to live in, if you are messed up for the rest of your life and in constant pain, you should never have to worry about money again when that pain was caused by the negligence of somebody else. But some people don't hold that belief and that's okay. So when I'm picking a catastrophic personal injury jury, I often start out with one of my first questions for a jury is, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, if supported by the evidence, could you award tens of millions of dollars in a jury verdict if the evidence supports that? Now, I'm not making them commit to awarding tens of millions of dollars. I'm asking if they could potentially fathom awarding that amount if it's supported by the evidence, which I intend to prove at court. The biggest misconception people think when you're picking a jury is you're trying to get 12 jurors who are in favor of your case. That is not true at all. It's the opposite. All you want is a fair playing field. What both sides are trying to do is find jurors or potential jurors who they don't want on their case. So I just want somebody who's open to the idea who will prosecute the claim as extended or allowed to under the law. Let's continue. Bite of it. This is jury nullification too, and the jurors are protected by the first rule, though the second doesn't apply, and judges do have the power to overrule a guilty verdict if they think the jurors are in the best. And of course, a guilty defendant can appeal, at least for a little while, but which that makes takes the guilty forever. form of jury nullification weaker than the not guilty kind. It's Cold comfort though. though. Given the possibility of jurors who might ignore the law as written, it's not surprising when picking jurors for a trial, lawyers, whose existence is dependent on an orderly society, will ask about nullification usually in the slightly roundabout way. Do you have any beliefs that might prevent you from making a decision based strictly on the law? If after learning about jury nullification... That's exactly the phrase that we use. For instance, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, if supported by the evidence, could you consider awarding tens of millions of dollars to a plaintiff? Mr. Tom, thank you. It's just against my belief system. I could never award that amount of money for pain and suffering. I don't think that exists. You just have to tough it out. And it's, it is what it is. I hurt every day. My back hurts. Nobody paid me tens of millions of dollars. Okay, juror number 10, thank you so much for saying that. So would you say that because of your beliefs, 
it would be impossible for you to make a decision strictly based on the law, even if we were able to prove that the case warranted tens of millions of dollars because of your personal beliefs, you just would never award that much money. Yes, that is true. Okay, juror number 10, and I'm just making sure I'm crossing my T's, dotting my I's. You have not heard a single fact of this case. And without hearing any single fact, there is no scenario ever in which you could consider awarding tens of millions of dollars, even though the law allows for it. Yes, that's correct. Boom, right there. That juror is going to be struck for cause. And side note, before we begin, any defense lawyers watching that example might be already typing their comment all upset. That such BS. If this was a death penalty case and I was seeking the death penalty, I need jurors who can consider the death penalty. Just like if I'm seeking tens of millions of dollars, I need jurors who can at least consider tens of millions of dollars if it's supported by the evidence. I love defense lawyers. I think they're very interesting people, but they tended to disagree with that. But that is as crystal clear of an example as I could give you think it's a good idea answer yes and you'll be rejected but answer no with the intent to get on the jury to nullify and you've just committed perjury technically a federal yeah. crime which makes the optimal strategy once on a jury to zip it but this introduces a problem for jurors who intend to nullify telling the other 11 angry men about your position is risky which makes nullification as a tool for fixing unjust laws nationwide problematic not to mention about 95 percent of criminal charges in the united states never make it to trial and rather end in a plea bargain but that's a story for another time. The only question about jury nullification that may matter in the end is if jurors should be told about it, and the courts are near universal in their decision, no way. Which, again, might seem self-interested. Courts do depend on the law, but there's evidence that telling jurors about nullification changes the way they vote by making evidence less relevant to them, which isn't surprising, that's what nullification is. But mock trials also show sympathetic defendants get more non-guilty verdicts and unsympathetic defendants get more guilty verdicts in front of jurors who were explicitly told about nullification compared to those who weren't, which sounds... So I totally agree with this. I don't think jurors should be told about the option of jury nullification. Obviously, it's a rational conclusion that they can make and any reasonable person can deduce that inference. But for what he said, I mean, as a lawyer, all I want is a fair shot. I don't make up the facts. I don't make up, you know, what happened. All we want is a level playing field. And sometimes, you know, if if a jury is predetermined to go into a case nullified, that lawyer or at least one of the lawyers is fighting an uphill battle and that's not right that's not the point of our justice system you go in with the facts that were given to you and you advocate accordingly now not every case is fair because not all facts are fair sometimes you have a quote-unquote slam dunk case sometimes you don't but that doesn't mean that the juror jury should be skewed in my opinion but it's important to know about or learn about in a setting like this, but when you're reading a jury charge, I don't think you should even give them the option because people might fixate on something that's irrelevant. And I've seen juries fixate on a lot of irrelevant things, and it's maddening. Sounds bad, but it's also easy to imagine situations where jurors blindly following the law would be terribly unjust. In the end, righteous will of the people, or anarchy, or citizen lawmaking, the system leaves you to decide. But as long as courts are fair, they require these rules, so jury nullification will always be with us. Okay, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you leave any questions, comments, concerns down below at the bottom. And I ask that you consider subscribing to this channel. We're growing like crazy. I think we just passed 263,000 subscribers. Thank y'all so much. Until next time.